Hi, welcome to this Corporate Maths video. In this video, we're going to go through the video solutions to the triangular numbers practice questions. If you want a full video tutorial on triangular numbers, if you go to corporatemaths.com and then go to the videos and worksheets page or go to www.corporatemaths.com forward slash content. And if you look for video 229, that will be the video tutorial on triangular numbers. OK, let's get started. So our first question. The first question says the pattern below shows the first three triangular numbers. So we've got pattern one and there's one in that pattern, one dot. We've got pattern two and there's three dots in that pattern. And then we've got pattern three and there's one, two, three, four, five, six dots in that pattern. So we've got one, three, six. So the first question says A, write down the first three triangular numbers. So they would be one, three and six. So question 1B, 1B says in the space below draw pattern 4. So as you can see we've got one dot in pattern 1, we've got three dots in pattern 2 and we've got six dots in pattern 3. And as you can see each time we're adding a new row at the bottom so we've got one, then we've got a row of two, then we've got a row of three. So we'll have a triangle with a row of four dots at the bottom. So it's going to be a circle and then another two circles and then another three circles and then another four circles. Excuse my circles. And then we've got our pattern four. We've got our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten circles. And the question says, write down the fourth triangular number. Well, that would be ten. And that's it. Question two says, write the first six triangular numbers. So we had one, three, six, and ten. That's the first four. And we've added two added three, added four, so we need to add five, so that'll be 15, and we need to add six, which would be 21. So the first six triangular numbers would be one, three, six, 10, 15, 21. Okay, so let's have a look at our next question. So question three. So question three says circle the triangular number. So we've got 25, 27, 28, and 30. Now if you have a look at the triangular numbers up here, I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna use this. So we had one, three, six, 10, 15, 21. So we added six to get 21. So if we add seven, that would be 28. So 28 would be the next triangular number. Okay, question four. Question four. Question four says John is adding consecutive triangular numbers. So you add in consecutive triangular numbers. And John says, when I add consecutive triangular numbers, I get another kind of special number. What kind of number does John get? So let's have a look at adding some consecutive triangular numbers. So let's list our triangular numbers. So we've got 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, and so on. And consecutive means one after another. So let's add 1 and 3. So 1 plus 3 is equal to 4. Let's add our next two consecutive triangular numbers. So we've added one and three. Let's add three and six. So three plus six is equal to nine. Let's add six and 10. So six plus 10 is equal to 16. Let's add 10 and 15. 10 plus 15 is equal to 25. And as you can see, our numbers are four, nine, 16, 25. They are square numbers. So John will get square numbers whenever he adds two consecutive triangular numbers. So question four, what kind of number does John get? John gets square numbers. Okay, question five. So question five says, find the difference between the fourth and eighth triangular numbers. So let's list our triangular numbers. They are one, three, we've added two, let's add three, six, add four, 10, add five, 15, add six, 21, add seven, 28, Let's see how many we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one more, we added seven, so let's add eight, so that would be 36. And we've been asked to find the difference between the fourth triangular number and the eighth triangular number. So to work out the difference between them, we'll take them away. We'll do 36 take away 10, and 36 take away 10 will be 26. So the difference between the fourth and the eighth triangular numbers is 26. Okay, our next question, question six. Question six says, one is a triangular number and it's also a square number. Find another number that's also a triangular number and a square number. So we're looking for a number that's a triangular number and square numbers. So let's start off by listing our triangular numbers. So 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, 28, 36, added 8, add 9, 45, 55, and so on. And our square numbers, they are our triangular numbers. Now let's list some square numbers. So square numbers. Well, 1. 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, 5 times 5 is 25, 6 times 6 is 36, 7 times 7 is 49, and so on. So as you can see here, we've been told that 1 is a triangular number and a square number, and also you can see that 36 is also a triangular number and a square number. So 36 is both a triangular number and a square number. 
Okay, our next question, question seven. So question seven says, Lexi says, if I multiply a triangular number by nine and then add one, it will give me another triangular number. Show Lexi is correct. So let's choose some triangular numbers. Let's multiply by them by nine and add one and see if that's another triangular number. So let's start off by listing some triangular numbers. So they would be one, three, six, 10, 15, 21, 28, 36, 45, and so on. And let's choose one. So let's start off with one. So if we take our one and we multiply it by nine, so one times nine is equal to nine, and then we add one, so nine plus one is equal to 10. And 10 is also a triangular number, fantastic. Let's try another one, let's try three. Three times nine is equal to 27. And then 27 add one is equal to 28. And that's also a triangular number. Let's just try one more, let's try six. Six times nine is equal to 54. 54 plus one is equal to 55. And if you look at our list, we added nine. So if we add 10, that'd be 55. So if you take a triangular number and you multiply by nine and add one, you get another triangular number. So Lexi is correct. Okay, question eight. Question eight says, write down the largest triangular number that is less than 100. So let's just list our triangular numbers. So we've got one, three, six. So we've added two, add three, add four, add 5, 15, add 6, 21, add 7, 28, add 8, 36, add 9, 45, add 10, 55, add 11, 66, add 12, 78, add 13, 91, and add 14, 105. And we've been asked to write down the largest triangular number that is less than 100, so that would be 91. Okay, so let's have a look at question 9. So question 9 says... Finn lists some consecutive triangular numbers. So he's got 120, 136, 153, and 171. And part A says, which triangular number comes after 171? So if we have a look at the triangular numbers we've been given, we've, we know that to get from 120 to 136, you would add 16, so add 16. So to get from 136 to 153, we would add 17. And to get from 153 to 171, we would add 18. So to get the next triangular number, we will add, we've added 16, 17, 18, so we would add 19. So 171 add 19, well that would be equal to 190. So the next triangular number would be 190. And then part B says, which triangular number comes before 120? So we've added 16, 17, and 18. So the addition before would have been to add 15. So 15 would have been added to this number to get 120. So if we take away 15, we'll find what the triangular number was before 120. So 120 take away 15 is equal to 105. So the triangular number before 120 is 105. So let's just put that in the answer box. Okay, so let's have a look at question 10. Question 10 says, is 210 a triangular number? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna list our triangular numbers. So one, three, six, 10, and then we've had a four, add five, 15, 21, 28, 36, 45, 55, 66, 78, and add 13, 91, add 14, 105, add 15, 120, add 16, 136, add 17, 153, add 18, 171, add 19, 190, add 20, 210. So is 210 a triangular number? Yes, it is. And later on in the video, we'll have a look at some questions where we're seeing if numbers are triangular numbers or not by using the rule. So our next question, question 11. So question 11 says, the triangular numbers are one, three, six, 10, and the nth term of the sequence is a half n bracket n plus one. So this is the general rule for triangular numbers. We've been asked to find the 200th triangular number. So we know that n is going to be equal to 200. So we're going to substitute that into our rule and that will tell us the 200th triangular number. So we've got a half of n, which is 200, and we're going to times that by 200 plus one. Well, 200 plus one will be 201. So a half of 200 is 100, and we're gonna multiply that by 201, and 100 multiplied by 201 would be 20,100. So the 200th triangular number would be 20,100. Okay, and our next question. 
Okay, so let's have a look at question 12. In question 12, we've been told the triangular numbers are 1, 3, 6, and 10, and so on. And we've been told the nth term of that sequence of numbers is a half n bracket n plus 1. And we've been asked, is 1,000 a triangular number? So if 1,000 is a triangular number, there would be a whole number value of n, which would, whenever you substitute it into this expression, into this nth term, it would give you an answer of 1,000. Okay, so let's put the nth term, this a half n, n bracket n plus 1 and put that equal to 1000 and what we'll see is if there's a whole number value for n we'll solve this for us okay so let's solve this equation and our first step would be to get rid of this a half so let's multiply both sides of the equation by 2 so multiplying the left hand side by 2 would get rid of the half so that would be n bracket n plus 1 and multiplying the right hand side of the equation by 2 would give us 2000 so that tells us that n multiplied by n plus 1 is equal to 2000 now n bracket n plus 1 means n, a number, multiplied by the next number. So what it's saying is that two consecutive numbers will multiply together to give us 2,000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to square root 2,000 to see what the square root of 2,000 is. So the square root of 2,000 would be equal to 44.721 and so on. So because the square root of 2,000 is 44.721 and so on, if there was going to be two consecutive numbers that would multiply together to be 2,000, it would have to be 44 and 45. So this, the number, the whole number below 44.721 and so on, and the whole number above it. So let's check 44 times 45 and see what we get. So 44 times 45 is equal to 1,980. Now that's not 2,000, so that means that 1,000 will not be a triangular number. So let's have a look at question 13. So question 13. So we've got the triangular numbers 1, 3, 6, and 10, and we've been told the nth term of that sequence, and we've got in a slightly different format this time, is n bracket n plus 1 divided by 2. And we've been asked, is 4950 a triangular number? So let's write the nth term, n bracket n plus 1 over 2 equals 4950. And if 4950 is a triangular number, you will have whole number values for n, which would give us a solution. So let's multiply both sides of this equation by 2. So multiply by 2 and multiply by 2 gives us n bracket n plus 1 equals 9900. So what we're looking for is two consecutive numbers. n and n plus 1 will be two consecutive numbers, which will multiply together to give us 9900. That's actually quite nice because 99 times 100 is equal to 9900. 99 times 100 is equal to 9,900. So that means that 4,950 is a triangular number, and it would actually be the 99th triangular number. So the answer is yes. Okay, and our next question. Okay, so let's have a look at question 14. So question 14 says there are six people in a room and everyone shakes hands with each other once. Work out how many handshakes there were in total. So here we've got six people. Uh, you could give them names like Alan, Bob, and so on. Um, but here we've got some names, or some people, A, B, C, D, E, F. And what we're going to do is we're going to see how many handshakes there'll be in total. So if the first person walked along and shook everyone's hand. So one, two, three, four, five. There'll be five handshakes and then they could walk over there. So if the, first of all, there'll be five handshakes. Then the next person would walk along and shake everyone's hand. So one, two, three, four, and then go over there. So then it would be all together. There would be five plus four, so that's going to be nine handshakes. And then the next person would walk along and shake one, two, three people's hands. So plus three. And then the next person would walk along and shake one, two hands. And then the next person would walk along and shake the last person's hand. And then that would be all the handshakes because this person would then just walk over and join the rest of the people. So to work out how many handshakes it would be all together, we're going to do 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. And if you think of the pattern of triangular numbers where we have 5 dots, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 4 dots, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 3 dots, 1, 2, 3, and then 2 dots, 1, 2, and then one more dot, that would be a triangular number, 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. And let's work out what it is. 5 plus 4 is 9 plus 3 is equal to 12, plus 2 is equal to 14, and plus 1 is equal to 15. I actually see this pattern quite a lot from watching snooker, where you've got 15 reds. But anyway, that's it, going off on a tangent. So all together, there would be 15 handshakes. And that's it. Okay, and our last question. Our last question, question 15. Question 15 says, a group of people are in a room, and everyone shakes hands with each other once. So we know there's going to be a triangular number, because whenever you've got groups of people in a room and they're shaking each other's hands, there's going to be a triangular number. So if there's two people, there'd be one handshake. If there was three people, there would be three handshakes. If there was four people, there'd be six handshakes. And I'm just listing the triangular numbers here, so I'm adding two, adding three, adding four, add five, 15, 
add 6, 21, add 7, 28. So if there were two people in the room, there'd be one handshake. If there were two, three people in the room, there'd be three handshakes. If there's four people in the room, there'd be six handshakes. Five, we've got 10. Six people in the room, there'd be 15 handshakes, as we've seen in question 14. If there were seven people in the room, there'd be 21 handshakes. And if there's eight people in the room, there'd be 28 handshakes. So that means because there was 28 handshakes, that means there'd be eight people in the room. So the question says, how many people are in the group? And the answer would be eight. So these were the video solutions to the practice questions on triangular numbers on Cobra Mavs. So if you find this video useful, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks very much.